Hey everybody, welcome back to Gordy's Gas Bags. We're at the hump day of Kiwi Week. I hope you've all been enjoying our movement across the ditch. Uh, Corona's still in the background, continues to hang about. And this one was a special shout out from Donna Wilkins, asked me to chase this individual up. And I'm actually very pleased to say that uh, I know this individual quite well. We've hung out a couple of times together and had a good laugh. And for those that don't know Yvonne Willering the way that I do, she's a very humorous lady. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Yvonne Willering. Oh, put pressure on me, why don't you? But I am a bit disappointed though, because I thought at least you'd wear a woolly cap, you know, so a bit of disappointment. Well, there. I did get the black and white out. I felt like I needed right. to be of some, I had, had some respect. Yeah. Yeah, all right then. But it's interesting because I did say to you before, like I'm not one that normally has uh, nicknames for people. I call them by right and I know you're a Sue, but I will do my best and I will call you Gordy since every other man's <laughs> dog's been calling you that. So I will stick with the tradition. Do you have a nickname? I'm not about to tell you that, am I? <laughs> yeah, I do. Have a few, yeah. <laughs> but it's really funny, you know, because when you asked, you know, what time would suit me to come on this program, do you, I kid you not, I actually went to my diary, and I still have a diary, but I went to my diary to check to see if the time was available, and <laughs> shit, there's nothing in my diary, I'm at home to teach, and what the hell am I doing, so <laughs> yeah, at least you're welcome relief, really. <laughs> well, do you know what, this has actually been one of the great pleasures of isolation, because uh, literally everyone I ring can't give me an excuse to say no. They've got nothing else to do. Yeah, I know. In our world of sport, because everything's come to a halt. How's COVID been for you? You're in Auckland. Yeah, people on. Um, yeah we're still obviously full lockdown. Um, yeah, but I guess it's at a stage now when you're starting to feel your age, because everyone's saying, you know, if you're 65 or well, even 70, above that, you've got to stay home and get someone else will do the shopping. And I'm going to, I've never felt my age like this before, you know. So, yeah, I'm doing the right thing. Um, I've, to be fair, I do a lot of stuff at home anyway. Uh, I contract coach, so I got, come and go as, as I do it, you know. But I'm sick of staining sheds, mowing lawns and everything else i'm ready to do something else now and i can hear it everyone else is starting to feel exactly the same but yeah. we've got to be smart no be you're smart. right and i think isn't it interesting i think just as the numbers have started to subside and give us some sort of positivity everybody wants to get out but in actual fact the reason those numbers are there is because we've been doing the right thing we've just got to sit through this sort of plateaued period until we can come out the good side of it yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's really interesting because sometimes when you talk to people, you know, and we're, we're getting our information, obviously, from the news. Yeah. But I actually, and this is honest, I used to be a microbiologist before I actually moved into, yeah, into Nepal. I was a laboratory technologist and I specialised in microbiology. And I tell you, whenever I hear yeah, exactly the same reaction, whenever I say this to people, I'm like, oh, goodness gracious, brains as well as, you know, good at sport. And I'm going, yeah, I had a job. I actually really enjoyed it, but it got to a stage, couldn't do the weekend work anymore because that's when we played Nepal. So very fortunate, Nepal New Zealand gave me a job and I haven't looked back since. I've been involved in Nepal ever since. Well, I'm going to make you look back right now, Yvonne, because oh, we're heading gee, back to when far? you... Well, I'm going to go back to when you were eight years of age. You landed in New Zealand at the uh, at eight, didn't you? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Uh, we had no English. It was really difficult for my folks. It was just my parents, my brother and myself. You know, my dad was guaranteed a job and accommodation and we got neither. So really, really tough start in New Zealand. Uh, certainly no involvement in Nepal until I was well in secondary school. And my phys ed teacher, uh, Dame June Mariu, who's still around, um, you know, she, uh, she introduced me to the sport and I thought, uh, but, you know, didn't really buy into it initially, but eventually, because I was tall at that time, uh, I was very lucky that it just progressed from there. And, yeah, my parents followed me around and, and yeah, it was really a lot of pride there as well. And I meant I got some honours uh, from the country, but it was also a reflection on my parents. I felt very much it was we'd made it in our new adopted country. And certainly New Zealand is now my adopted country, without a doubt. Yeah, it does a good job, New Zealand, of adopting great people. And I put you in, in that category, without a doubt. Um, you... You, you made the comment then and you said that you were a tall uh, player, yes. which... Yeah, let me sit up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but it, kind, well, it was kind of a point of difference, wasn't it, back yes. then? I mean, you were really well known when you first went into the Silver Ferns for having 
you know, that height defensively. Yeah. And notice again, we're talking goal defences here. You know, I loved Kev Harvey Williams coming out saying, you know, one of the brains of the outfit. And I listened to her interview. And when she said, you know, the intelligence, I'm sitting back here going, you go for it, girl. Totally agree with you, you know. <laughs> and actually, some of the people that you've had on, it's been a really interesting journey because I've actually had an involvement with quite a number of these people, you know, and, and certainly can tell you some about that. But Kath Harvey Williams was an interesting person. Um, obviously, she was playing goal defence uh, and I was goal defence. But what I loved about her was her strut. You know, she had this real oh, strut to yes. her. And I tried it. I honestly really tried it because <laughs> I thought it was cool. Eh? People parted the way as she walked through, but it just didn't, it just didn't look right on me. So, uh, no. Nah, That's funny. And, you yeah. know, the other person that has, a, that has a strut, there are two people that have had a strut that have come through netball for me. Harbs yep. is one. The other one is Vicky Wilson. Yeah, she does. Shani Layton's got a bit of a strut too, though. Oh, it's yeah. Oh, and Shani, oh, shouldn't do it. Hey? She's Absolutely. the modern day strut. Very yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, very yeah. true. Very true. Yeah. Um, so, when you, uh, for those people that mightn't have seen you play, you, in, when you played for New Zealand, you became really well known for attacking the ball as a defender. So you would, you would go out and hunt the ball, which was a bit of a difference at that time. People, like defensively, yeah. I, th I think uh, the, the game used to be, you used to have to really stay on your player and sort of, you know, do all the groundwork. Whereas you were a bit of a trailblazer, weren't you, in that respect? Um. Yeah, I got that from, from Dame Lois Muir, though. Uh, don't forget, she was my Silver Ferns coach, mm. actually from start to finish the whole 10-year period. And uh, she played goal defence for New Zealand as well, so that yeah. was all uh, obviously helpful. Yeah, I do believe, and I still do, I talk about, you know, taking the ball in flight. So it's actually more space marking, which is now what we're trying to come back to uh, in the New Zealand style of play. And I'm not saying the one-on-one -on -one and the hands-over is wrong. It's just a different style of play. And yeah, I loved going out up for the intercepts and uh, I probably wasn't quite as disciplined as I should have been so uh, you know it was sort of you know um, I'll do all the work and you make sure I cover my back and back so my goalkeepers were very very valuable to me but it was quite interesting during the time uh, when I was a Silver Friends coach Joyce McCann who was the New Zealand president uh, way back then and she and said to me you know congratulations making the team but I just want you to know that Dame Lois in one game she managed to get 16 intercepts so that's a record you've got to beat and I kid you not there were times when I went for that and talk about being selfish I was basically saying to players leave it for me leave it for yeah. me you know so, <laughs> yeah and I, and I to this day I believe I actually got that number but Lois Muir she just just disputes it and says no way I never got that but uh, you know I just <laughs> really enjoy going for the ball in flight and I know you said attacking play but play but uh yeah anyone that knows me if they're listening to this will now say her attacking play wasn't that good and it's true whenever I got ball in flight say I got the intercept three or four people would be ready to take the ball <laughs> off me you know and, yeah and I thought they were just being teamy no they weren't being teamy they just didn't want to lose position that was yeah. as simple as that really so yeah oh those yeah. But great there times, are, great times. yeah there are yeah. defenders that still exist in this game you, you made the comment then you said that your goalkeepers were so important to you am I right was it Millie Munro is it Millie Munro you got it yeah, yeah. so yeah, she was first... in prime yeah, yeah. And she was such a quiet, shy person. It was great. You know, if I said something to her, she would go, okay, Yvonne, you know. So, yes, yeah, she was there for many, many years. And we actually developed this really great understanding. And I've heard some of your other people have spoken about it as well, the combinations and the friendships that developed. And her and I, yeah, we had a really special bond. And after that, um, Tracy Fear came into the equation. Yep, yep. And she reminds me about this all the time. And I know she's right. She's totally correct in this. Um, she came on the court one, you know, at, at, instead of Millie in one time. And I, um, I probably had a bit of reservation about her. And I said, mate, you've got to prove your worth, particularly since she was Australian anyway. You know, you've got to prove your worth. And uh, she was on the court. And I remember, I still remember, I went for an intercept, missed. And I turned around and Tracy had managed to get it. So I <laughs> saved my ass, basically, you know. And I said, you've made it. You've made it, you know. And it was just, it was just again, another nice rapport we had. And again, a great team understanding that we developed there. And why Tamano ended up being our wing defence. And, uh, yeah, we thought we were a pretty cool defensive unit. Well, you were a cool defensive unit. And 
because uh, you, your vice captain, didn't you? Was it 70, 75 or 70, yeah. 75? Yeah, 75 was, was, yeah. yeah 75, 75. Was the, 75 was the first world champs I attended. And I just heard, like Norma Plummer, she also came out and that was actually her first world champs. And she was wing attack. And, uh, and like, we're great friends and we often talk about the good old days. And she says, remember me, remember me. And I'm going, ah, when we played Australia, Chris Burton was your goal defence. And I actually spent more time watching her play because I was just, I'm pretty competitive, to be fair. So whenever she got an intercept, I made sure I got one as well. And it's quite interesting because we drew that game. So, um, and it was the days of having only a round robin tournament. So we actually, we drew that game, but unfortunately we lost to England by one. And we actually ended up third because of that. Um, but that isn't as bad as the 79 world champs, mm. which we, we attended. Uh, in that respect, there were three teams that ended up winning that tournament. It is the only time I know that Australia actually were cheering for us uh, because the reason was they lost to Trinidad and Tobago. Yes. We lost to Australia, which meant we really had to be Trinidad and Tobago for Australia to have a chance. And I remember, I remember it vividly outdoors. And I remember it that after the first quarter, and we were winning against Trinidad and Tobago convincingly, and Australia came in. And you could see, I know I was supposed to be close to concentrating on the game, but I was <laughs> watching. You know, and they're coming, what's happening, what's happening? And suddenly they could see we were going to win this game, you know. And it was just a magic experience because not only did Australia obviously back us, but the crowd were booing us because it was in Trinidad and Tobago that year. And honestly, I just loved every moment of it. And I was partnering Jean-Pierre, you know, one of their greatest goal attacks. Yeah. And so any time I got an intercept, they booed. And I thrive on that. So, yeah. yeah, we had a great time. Just a great time. Which, yeah. which, was the, which was of those two tournaments was it in the opening ceremony? Tell me the story about the pigeon. Oh, don't. Where did you get that from? <laughs> That's not fun. Where did you dig that up from? <laughs> I, know, I know a lot of stuff. You'd be surprised. I know, because I thought when we have this interview, I'm going, you're not going to have anything to say. You're not going to know you, Oh, you've underestimated oh, me. Look, I was so proud, you know, because here I was. I was vice captain. I wasn't responsible enough to be a captain. <laughs> but I was a vice captain and I was uh, the flag bearer. So we walked into the venue and here I'm standing proud as you know my team's behind me and they released these pigeons you know and suddenly I got this bird shit all <laughs> over me and I'm going I can do this I can do this I'm going because it doesn't matter because my teammates are getting you know <laughs> spat on as well you know they're yeah. getting annihilated as well and anyway the pigeons were gone and I turned not a scratch on anyone. No one was covered at all. And all they're doing is laughing at me, having, you know, and I must have looked ridiculous. Oh. And I'm an animal lover. And then after that, these planes came over and these poor pigeons were in dire straits. And I'm going, go away, go away. You know, I'm going, you are kidding me. But so a really what I call a proud moment just turned to custard. I was oh, not impressed. Almost, not impressed. almost literally. Yeah. Hey, um, <laughs> did you, did you kind of know... You're vice captain. You say, I mean, to be vice captain, you had to have some leadership qualities. Yeah. Did you kind of? I always ask this. Like, I'm always really curious. As a player, did you kind of realise? I think I'm going to delve into the world of coaching. We spoke with Nolene Tarua on Monday yeah. night, and she said she sort of fell into it more than it was something that she, you know, walked towards. What about you? Yeah, same. I mean, when I was playing for, for New Zealand, uh, no, nah, it was just totally about that. Um, I enjoyed the company of everyone around me, and that's all it was. Uh, it was exactly the same situation. I was playing for Auckland uh, at, in one year. We didn't have a coach, so I became player coach. That was not on the cards. I would never recommend anyone become a player coach because you will always go into probably the coaching more so than the playing. And how can you tell players what to do if you're not doing it yourself? So yeah. the next year I started coaching, had a brilliant stint with the Auckland team, just loved it. We had a 10-year period. We were, we were top of the pops, basically, and it was just wonderful. And that, I guess that set me up for coaching, you know, further along and also young internationals and ultimately the Silver Fern. I remember having a conversation with you some time back and uh, it was to do with um, Vili Davu 
around how to manage. So Vili Davu came in, was an extraordinary player, but was a big girl and with a, in, with a different training ethic. And I remember having a conversation with you about how you had to really work as a coach to tailor the way you went about your business to manage some of the Islander players or, or whatnot. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, and um, we look at, and I think we made a mistake for a period of time trying to follow Australia. You know how you got your, well, your fast feet for a start off, yeah. but also just your quick movements and everything else. You know, if you now look and say, what's the difference between Australia and New Zealand, say in the attacking circle, well, we have holding shooters very much whereby we bring the ball to the shooter, whereas your shooters are very mobile. And so, you know, it's a question of, you know, making sure that I'm available for the pass. And, um, you know, so that's a big difference in itself. Other end of the court, yeah, we've got players that uh, sometimes they haven't got the greatest movement, but they've got tremendous timing. And certainly yeah. Vili Manodavu was one of those. I mean, just her just her enthusiasm, you know, and, and everything. And she was just a tremendous team person. So in those days, if we had the yo-yo test and some of these other tests, you know, and which is what Nolan did with her with her current team, mm. you know, she has standards that they had to pass. Listen, if I did that in those days, we wouldn't have had a team. So I still believe, I believe in fitness, don't get me wrong. And uh, nowadays, because it's a full-time career, absolutely you need to do the necessary work. And yeah, you should be reaching standards. But in those days, don't forget, it wasn't a professional league. It was still amateur, you know. And, you know, there are times when uh, it isn't just about fitness. It's also about the smarts up here. You know, I mean, I've got a, a current, well, at the moment, obviously, we're in hold, but a, a social team that I've taken charge of. And some of them are players that I've had in my Auckland team from past and also the North Harbour team. But recently, the last couple of years, we brought some newbies into the team. They look at our seniors and go, oh, we're better than that. And you can see it. You can feel it. And yet when we go on court, it's my senior players that have got the smarts. And they know when to go, when to stay, and whatever to do. And also, it's just that the heart factor, you know, that, that's there. And I think that Nolene is in a situation now, I guess, that it's a combination of both. But, yeah, with, with uh, Vili Minor, it was, yeah, I mean, I loved just the bits, you know, and we're still in contact. Um, and, and, you know, there were times when I'm um, going, mate, you know, we could probably drop a little bit of weight here, you know, but, you know, she would give 100% for the duration of the game. And I guess when I went over and I actually coached Fiji, I did that for a three-year period. You know, again, that was, that was a learning curve for me as yeah. well. Um, and because one, they uh, obviously, and no disrespect to Fiji, but they weren't in the top four internationally. So, you know, the expectations I had for them, I had to not lower them, but I had to have different expectations for them. And, uh, you know, I think that that certainly was a tremendous learning curve. And I really, really enjoyed that, uh, that whole experience. Yeah, it's, it's interesting you say that because even in chatting with, with Plum, you know, like what she's gained from her involvement with South Africa, you know, and yeah. you kind of think like for the, for the likes of you guys that have had, you know, the silver ferns and the Australian diamonds to be able to go on and continue to help world netball is just so good. Like it's so yeah. good for the whole, the whole system. Yeah. I was actually with South Africa many years ago. Um, and it was when Marlene Machner was the, was the coach. So they were still really in isolation, you know, and I went over there and um, the players, thought they were pretty good and they were pretty good but when you've got to basically check it out against you know the top four for nations and I think that's where the luxury is now because a lot of their top players now playing in the Australian league they were playing in the New Zealand league they now know what intensity is about in training they know what intensity is about in the playing and they know the standards they have to achieve and I think that's really suited them and held them to the fore probably in the more recent world championships but when I was with them and I said to them, yeah, what you're doing now on attack, your big diagonal passes that they used to do, the big lob passes, yeah. I'm going, mate, you know, the top nations are going to take those balls. And then initially they wouldn't buy into it, you know, and then slowly they could see, and it mainly through video work we had to do this, that, you know, it came out on it. And uh, they went to the world champs and <laughs> whilst I was really proud of them, part of me, I actually got done in a little bit there because, uh they beat New Zealand in the semi-final. And I was over there 
and um, and then uh, one of the one of the people from from television said, Yvonne, you've got to go on air to explain your side of it because you know with radio talkback you're getting done in, you know. And I actually got angry because I'm going, hang on a minute, here we are. We want to improve these countries, yeah, so long as they don't beat our own, yeah. you know. And and Sandra Edge was in the team at that time, and you know her and I we go a long way back. And I felt for her, I felt for the whole team, yeah. but on the day. New Zealand didn't play well, and sure, you know, South Africa played really well. And Sandra Edge totally agreed with me, and she said, no, 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 this was about us. You know, one, we lost it, but respect South Africa, they gave it their best shot. And don't forget, in those days, Irene van Dijk was in the team, and Leanna yeah. de Bruyne was in their team, you know, and so they were always going to progress up from there. But what happened in the final... They were so pleased to have beaten New Zealand. They shot off to London and had a great time. And so when it came to the final, they'd already played it. They played it in their semi-final. And Australia won that quite convincingly in the end. So, when, yeah, interesting. Yeah, when you talk about that story, something just pops to mind for me, which I've, I haven't had a chance to ask anyone, and I should have probably questioned Nolene on this on Monday night. So when the ANZ Championship came on board. So we went from the National Bank Cup and we bought in the ANZ Championship and Australia and New Zealand had five teams each. Uh, and it was a really exciting time. I, I, I mean, I, you and I both coached at that time. Um, and then after the ANZ Champs and we go through to Suncourt Super Netball and the two countries have now dispersed. During that period, irrespective, irrespective of who was the Silver Ferns coach throughout that period, do you think that familiarity because of the way the countries play, do you think that that had a bearing or an effect on the real on the international game? Oh, absolutely, absolutely, it did. You know, and um, yeah, and I mean, I've spent time, and uh, certainly I've spent time with you and with your franchise team. But I've actually spent time with every franchise team uh, in Australia over the period of time, and I love coaching over there. You know, and when I say that locally, they go, "What?" and I'm going, "No, no." What I love about the Australian way is that you have the intensity and the intensity is there in trainings and your intensity is there in games. We talk about it, but until you experience it, you don't know, you know, and I think that we did that. When I, I was with Swifts one year and I was, we were doing some space marking and they were open to it and, uh, and it was wonderful and I enjoyed it and I'm sure, and I'm hoping obviously they really enjoyed it as well. And I was starting to sweat and we were really into it and I'm going, yeah, that was a great session. Then one of the players came up to me, it was Shani Layton actually, <laughs> and she came up to me and she says, hey mate, and I went, yeah, you know, mate. And she says, you know, is it okay if we now do it at full pace, at full intensity? <laughs> I thought they were doing it at full intensity, you know. So then they got back out onto the court and they really stuck it to them, you know. And I'm going, that's what it's about, you know. And that's until you sight it, you don't know about it. And the only way we could sight it is if we played against you guys. And then we saw that more and more because we were for quite a long period of time, a bit of she'll be right. And we still don't. I don't believe everyone still really nails it all the time. And I said to Laura Langman, when she went over to Australia, I said, these teams, the teams you're in now, the team you're in now, you're far more suited for that because she always trained with intensity. She always demanded the best of everyone. And sometimes some of you, and I'm, you know, some of the players yeah, yeah. didn't yeah. respond to that. They just didn't respond to that, you know, and uh, it went against them. And she... And especially now that I've had more involvement with her through the Silver Ferns and I've got a better understanding of her both on and off the court. I mean, she just leads by example and it's just wonderful to see. And I love that. And I see that in the Australian teams all the time. Really interesting perspective, Yvonne, because for you to say that about Laura in terms of, you know, what suited her, because... I mean, there's no two ways about it. I mean, I think her game has grown unbelievably yeah. in her Suncorp Super Netball time. And in fairness, yeah. she had Nolene as a coach and she was in a franchise that was very successful. But, you know, there was a lot of criticism as to whether or not that was the right move for her. So it's yeah. interesting to hear from your perspective, big tick. 
absolutely. And I think New Zealand made a made a mistake. I think you know to have the rulings that they had. They've changed that, and you know, full credit to them that they looked at it and have now changed that. Um, yeah, it suited her, and it's interesting as well. It also suited Nolene. Because I think that, I know that, you know, people say she should have had the Silver Ferns job prior to her going to, um, you know, Suncorp over in Australia. But I actually think it made her into an even better coach. I think she's got now far more appreciation of, again, that intensity, uh, the different ways in which you do stuff. And I, that's what I, what I like about her. We have quite similar philosophies, and that's why I'm happy to be attached to her right now. Because um, what she says goes like if she says you need a fitness level of this then that's the way it is you know so players know where they stand and i think part of this she's actually gained from her experiences with an australian setup so uh, yeah i think that's a, you know it's a, a combination a growing phase and now that we're separated uh, and we only come together for what now five international games it just isn't the same and i just think that week in week long competition is what we require do I think Australia is slightly ahead of us within their Suncorp teams? And I'm going, yep. And the reason for that, if you look at earlier when the, you know, they had that super club um, in Nelson yep. and two of your teams came over, you know, well, you know, they won. And so that's the comparison that we still make. And uh, also, to be fair, you have some really good import players that we no longer have on our shores. And certainly they make a massive difference. And, you know, I probably have to congratulate Australia and your rulings within Suncorp. In fact, you have unlimited subs to international netball because now have a look at it internationally, world champs. England was up there. Jamaica was up there. Australia was up there. So we're getting more, and South Africa. Well, Norma would have me if I didn't mention yeah. South Africa. Ow, you know. So, you know, they're all up there. South Africa, they're brilliant at the moment. They've, you know, and some of their players, and Norma would state exactly the same. Their involvement in the competition within Australia, week in, week out, tough competition, close games, it's what you require as a player, you know, and it's worked for them. Yeah, it's, well, uh, you know, where was our world game going to go if the two powerhouses remained at the top? I always beg that question. So for everyone that gets worried about, from an Australian perspective, whether we've done ourselves an injustice, I kind of think that, you know, keep at the forefront of our mind that the bigger picture is damn important as well. So, mm -hmm. hey, um, yeah, it's a fine line. Yeah, yeah, well, it is, yeah. And if and for Lisa Alexander, she's the one that's experienced that fine line and how difficult it can be at the top when you're juggling the difference between a competition that uh, is there to prove it's the world's best and then also, you know, be the, be the diamond yeah. coach and have to have success at the same time. Yeah, I, I understand that. There was a period of time when our import players, and don't forget we could only have one, but our import players generally were goal shooters Mm. And we felt it, absolutely we felt. We're still feeling it a little bit now. You know, if you have a look at it, who's going to replace, for instance, Maria Falau, you know, and, yeah, we've got a few people in there. But, um, like, th you've got a stage there where Australia was about who to leave out, whereas we were about who are we going to put in, who's going to be the lucky person. Hopefully that will change over time. Um, but, again, you know, it's uh, that competition week in and week out and also putting your reputation on the line i think it's really important mm, yeah yeah so, let's go to 99 ah i knew we were going back there <laughs> it's really interesting over here like your highs are always our lows and our highs obviously are your lows and over here like people say to me let it go Yvonne let 99 go and I go you're right let's let it go I then listened to your interview with Sherelle and there it is again back on medication and I'm going what are you doing to me <laughs> well it was why I was going to bring it up because you know Sherelle you know, of course, Sherelle, like, Sherelle. Well, I know. I mean, that's what I was sort of, you know, when I chatted with her on Gordy's Yes Bags, I was saying she became the golden child from that I moment. Know. That she owes me. I know. I get it. It's yeah, the coin yeah. toss. Yeah. So, yeah, obviously, I was coach at the time. Uh, you know, only two, well, two years in the job. But it was in Christchurch, for goodness sake. I think the main thing was... We were leading by six goals going to the last quarter, and she alluded to that as well. We actually went up seven in the, in the last quarter. You know, and I look at Sherelle and I'm going, mate, you owe me. You really owe me. She's a thorn in my side. Yeah. What really gets me about that, two things. One, 
I, and I'm sure, and she indicated that they had a wonderful three-quarter time uh, team talk. Yeah, but we had a confident team talk in three-quarter time saying, you know, let's just carry on the way we're carrying on sort of thing. Um, I had the opportunity of making a sub, which I'd done in the, in, the, in the semi-final against Jamaica. I considered it because it just would have changed it up a little bit, and I didn't. One of the reasons, and again, that's me learning as a coach, one of the reasons was, why would you make a sub when you're six goals up? And I generally would say, yeah, I guess you're right. And I guess that influenced me, and I didn't make the sub. But the hardest thing about that was Sherelle, once she scored that final goal, and we made a lot of mistakes in that final quarter, by the way. We uh, broke at the line, and, you know, there's lots of things that we did badly. Certainly, Australia capitalised on our mistakes. Absolutely, you know. But Sherelle came running past our bench. I stood up, and everyone thought, oh, you know, that's good sportsmanship. No, 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 no. I was ready to strangle her. Honestly, she just, and it was like this daze, you know, and I'm going, you prat, you prat. I said a few other words, but that were what some of the words, you know, and I'm going, you're bloody kidding me, you know, unbelievable. And like to get one goal from hero to zero. Yeah. I found out afterwards <laughs> that some of our administrators had put champagne and balloons in our dressing room at three quarter time. Yeah. And so they had to, at the end of the game, take it all out again. And that's the difference, eh? One goal makes. And at the end, there was, there was a song, and it was um, the song, You Are the Champions. And I thought, well, that's pretty decent off them, and, you know, indirectly. Yeah. But they'd already made, put that on there thinking we'd won. And I learned from that. I learned from that game because I thought, did I become score focused and not performance focused? And you know, whereby you say, oh, it's okay, we're still five goals up, or it's okay, we're still four goals off, rather than saying, listen, let's nail it. We've done the six goals. Let's just power through and play to the best of our ability. Yeah. And I say that to people now focus on the moment, not on the end result, you know? But it's interesting, I had a bit to do with Vixens, and um, one time they were playing, and I was in the stands, and I was introduced <laughs> to Sherelle's parents. And I went, right, this could go one of two ways. <laughs> and no, and I went, no, worry, I'm going to turn. I turned to them, and I said to them, I just want you to know, I've forgiven Sherelle. And do you know, <laughs> they knew exactly what I was talking <laughs> about, and I'm going... Sherelle's told everybody, and it was so funny, and I'm looking, I'm going, no, no, we know what you're saying, and I'm going, okay, let's just leave it at that, yeah. you know, you are kidding me, it was oh, so God. cool, though, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, like, and you know what, though, when, when you think about it, and you look at what Sherelle went on to do from that moment, yeah. if anyone was going to bring you pain, it's not a bad player to do so. All right, nice try, <laughs> I'm trying I to ain't going to wear that. But she owes me. I'll give you that part. But we, you know, even now when we when we talk, and I go, no, I'm not going to go there. No, no, it's a block. We're finished with all that, you know. So, yeah. I, and I wish you all the best in her coaching right now yeah. because I'm really, in, I'm interested in all coaches, not just in New Zealand, but all over the world to see them progress through and see, you know, the difference, uh, you know, from being a player to being a coach. And one player, Irene Van Dijk, and she's now coaching, you know, at social yeah. level, but also. And I never, would never have thought she would have been a coach, you know. And until I saw, because she was never bad on drills. I mean, I was the first silver fence coach to have her. And when she came into the team, couldn't take a hard pass, couldn't take a ball at speed, and never even thought about doing defence work. You've got to be kidding me. I'm a shooter, you know. And I'm going, right, we've got a challenge here. But when I see her in action now, I'm just so proud of her because she's really going out there. You know, I'm not talking about the elite level, but she's so cool with kids and she's explaining different things, both on attack and defence. And I'm looking at her and she just smiles and I go, whatever. That is really cool to see. And same with, there's lots of co lots of players that, that are now obviously filling the, the coaching roles. Yeah, it's exciting. I said that to Sherelle in hers, you know, where, where does her coaching career go? Irene, she's so passionate it's hard to imagine that she'll ever give yeah. the game away so yeah it's, it's exciting to see that I, wa I wanted to ask you and I do I will move on from 99 but as you're oh, would, you, would you mind well, I, yeah. <laughs> isolation's enough I get it I, what yeah. I wanted to know though because the media over in New Zealand we've always heard about this we don't probably truly understand um 
but mm. the media or the status of netball in New Zealand is extraordinary. And the media can be brutal. And I just wondered during your reign as Silverfern's coach, how you felt you were treated through that time? Ooh. Um, yep, it was tough. I felt, you know, there were times when you would expect to have the support and I felt I didn't have the support um, on that. And that's why often like people say, uh, say what are your highlights? And, and my highlights probably, I mean, certainly I had highlights with the Ferns, don't get me wrong, but it probably wouldn't be uh, a specific thing from the Silver Ferns. And I guess that's why I'm adamant now uh, that I will give uh, any current coach, and not just Silver Ferns coach, but coaches in general, all the support I can, I can give to them. And now I'm in a situation, I don't want their jobs, so the, it's a non-threatening situation. So certainly if I can be of any help, you know, it would be. And I've spoken to a few people about that. I probably didn't help myself in that I should have asked. For, for help, and I guess that I was a pretty strong personality, and I guess people just let me go my way, you know. Uh, I didn't get an assistant coach initially, and I would have liked to have had that, you know, and, but hindsight is, is a wonderful thing, you know, at, at the time. I got the Silver Ferns job, not in great circumstances, in fact, in awful circumstances, it was through the demise of another coach. So I had the same team, same management, and we went straight into a game against Australia, and I guess the, it was about, you know, staying in single digit against them. It wasn't even expectation to win. And so it was like, you couldn't just do a rebuilding. Nolene Taurua, Dame Nolene, has come into this brilliantly. And I've reminded her of this as well. Because unfortunately, again, though, it was through the demise of another coach. But the Silver Ferns were at a real low. And every player would have accepted any help that they could have got at that stage. And they were at a situation where they were always going to get a, a help. I felt for Janine, uh, because it wasn't just about her. How dare they just blame her? Oh, yeah, not everyone is, by the way. Yeah. But, you know, generally speaking, like media-wise, it did come across that, you know, that, uh, uh, to do with coach. As coaches, we know that at the end of the day, we are judged on results. So we know that. But that doesn't mean to say that, you know, we have to take that totally on board because there's a lot of circumstances, a lot of issues that needed to be addressed. And, you know, I think certainly as time's gone on, they have been addressed. And uh, Nolene's a strong personality. She's kept up with her coaching and absolutely she was the best person for the job. Well, I, well and that brings me to this question. So the phone rang and it's Noel's and she says, what does she say? <laughs> Come back. Come on board. Yeah, it was... <laughs> Yeah, because initially um, it was like, um, so so what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, what are you doing? I'm going. What do you want? What's this about? You know, and I did have to think. Um, I actually over the you know last sort of I guess eight years or so, I have spent quite a bit of time overseas, uh, certainly in Australia, but also I was spent quite a few times. I've been back to South Africa helping with school coaching and a lot of their coaching as well. And I didn't spend as much time in, in New Zealand. Certainly uh, coach, like Australia has a lot of coach umpiring seminars. I just love those and I love being involved in those. So spend most of my time with that. Um, and I, I cared for coaches here, but not in what I call an official capacity. So, you know, when Noel said that, I'm going, right, you know, and I'm going, well, that's okay, because of a silver fern cluster groups. Yep. Hadn't been involved in what I call the elite level within New Zealand for a long, for quite a long time. So I'm going, oh, and I know the coaching has changed, uh, the styles, although Nolene is still quite, you know, um, I'll show you you gain the knowledge, then you do and you question. And I like that. Um, but we do have a lot of what I call player-centered coaching now, whereby we totally empower the athlete. I have no problems with empowering the athlete, but they've got to gain the knowledge first. They've got to have the understanding and the knowledge. And, that's, and I believe in that. And so does Noel. So once we got that sorted out, um, yeah, it was just a question of going into the, the cluster groups with the elite and just seeing how it went. And also was had um, um, Donna Wilkins and uh, Mark Foster, um, you know, they were on board as well. Yep. And I'm going, wow, you know, and I really enjoyed it. It was great with those two coaches and we shared the knowledge and it's just the buzz. But also the players, our players now, our elite players, they do uh, train with intensity. 
uh, and they do, you know, and I'm going, it has changed in that respect. And so, yeah, really enjoyed it. But when she asked me to come on board for this last one, and she says, you will have to wear some of the silver fern gear. And I'd put a little sweat on there and I'd go, me in silver fern gear. I mean, I would never have thought this would ever happen again, you know. And here, and I was in Perth, and here I'm strutting my stuff, and I'm going, look at me now. Who would have thought this would still be happening at my age, you know? But, yeah, just really enjoyed the whole experience. And it brought me back into a belief with our youngsters, because, you know, we always, and we're doing it now as well, we talk about the good old days, but some of our elite players, or most of our elite players now, you know, they are putting in the hard yards, just like we did. And it's just was lovely to learn that and to see it in action. And uh, yeah, really actually enjoyed it and gave me a hell of a buzz. So, all right. So I'll give you your moment right here and right now. How, uh -oh. well, like, I mean, how, how good having that phone call and then what, 11 or whatever months later or however long it was, transferring to a World Cup success. I mean, how proud were you? Sorry. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, it was, it was magic. But you could see it developing. And, you know, when Noel's, uh, when Dame Nolan, got, I love this, Dame Nolan. Dame, I know. Yeah, when she, yeah, I know. Unreal. We were talking about, it was really interesting, just a side note. We were, we were having a drink together after one of the, uh, one of the games. Yeah. Uh, and she didn't know, or she would have known, but it wasn't out there that she was going to get a Damehood. You know, and, and for some reason we were talking about, curtsying to me you know give me the curtsy give me the bow you know and we were just kidding about this and she already knew at that stage and I'm going damn it I should be doing it for her you know so it was wonderful yeah. to have this but uh, yeah it was just crazy and now I forgot my question you were going to say well I was just saying how, how how pleasing to the heart was it to watch that oh, yeah. journey and and to be attached to it yeah but initially if you have a look at it she had some losses Mm. And I, you know, and initially I'm going, mate, you know, your track record right now stink. You know, mm. it was something like five losses, one, two wins, you know, it was stink. And she says, yeah, 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 but if you have a look at it, you know, and this is, I guess, uh, where it's neat to just to discuss with another coach what's going on, you know. And she said, yeah, yeah, but, you know, I'm trying out lots of different combinations. I need to see them now at international level yeah. to see how we will operate for the world champs. So her whole gearing, even in that year prior, was about gearing towards the world championships. And I admire her for that. So with her, it wasn't about, oh, I've got to get the results. I've got to get the wins. It's about I am preparing this team for the world championships. And you could see it was a progressive build-up, not just on the court, what I really enjoyed seeing was the off the court stuff that she yeah. was nailing into the players and just that team belief and that team unity that happened from start to finish. And I just looked at that and, you know, yeah, it was just incredible. And, you know, whilst she's got to take a heck of a lot of accolade, so do the players because they bought into the whole concept of it, you know, and they knew their responsibility. And what really I found really interesting for that final game, you know, every player was able to do whatever they wanted to in the morning. And I saw some of the players were out. I actually took a tour group. And the players were just walking around, just doing their own thing. Now, that's changed over time. That's probably something the Australians have done over a long period of time, but we hadn't. And so I thought, they haven't got the team unity. Yeah, they did. They have got the team unity the moment they get back together as a team. And that's something I think we've learned from the Australians because we're very strong, always have been, and it may be because of that Polynesian influence, but we have both social and task cohesion. Social, we want to get on, we all want to be happy campers and everything else, you know. And Kath Harvey Williams actually mentioned, she says, yeah, we may not always get on very well, but you put the green and gold on us and you put us on the court and we will perform. And that's Australia, right? You know? 100%. And so, and whilst we do the same, we also put a lot of focus on that team spirit. We want both. Absolutely, we want both. And I know Australia does now too. Absolutely, you want both. But it was interesting that the players had their own time. Dave Nolan had the faith and the trust that when they come back together prior to the game, it was business as usual. You know, and they went into that game, and I do believe when she says that, not to, we want to win this, we have to win the world champs. It was about, 
we've now got this opportunity, let's make the most of this opportunity. So the winning didn't come into it, but it was about the opportunity. And wow. poof, yeah, you know, like and I was pleased to have been, it was great to be part of it. I was part of it, but I wasn't. I loved seeing it, you know, seeing the team in action, but it was there. It was theirs to win. It was their celebration, and I stayed well away from it. Well, I, look, I, I'm, I was thrilled for you. I, I was very excited to hear you were back in some capacity doing, you know, a little crack at the top. And I do, I, I pay tribute to Nolene, Yvonne, because I think she's been incredible in engaging and bringing back um, uh, people that she's not going to be threatened by. And that's, that can be a great fear of a, of a lot of coaches. Um, before we wrap up, I do want to ask, you've got, a, you've got a terrific, and you mentioned it before, terrific relationship with the plum star, with Norma. Yeah. Good mate. Yeah, what's this plumster? I would never dare call her that. <laughs> it's, really it's a nickname. We don't have Dame. I can't call her Dame Norma. <laughs> no. Yeah, I know. I'm, su she, I'm sure she's surprised she's not a Dame anyway. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, really, yeah, we do. You know, we, we do coaching stuff together. We're on the international uh, panel together, which is cool. And, uh, yeah, we, we interchange, interact with one another. Part of me would have liked to have uh, been Silver Ferns coach when she was Australian coach. No disrespect to Jill McIntosh, who was the coach. Yeah. But Jill would sit on the sideline and she'd just sit there. And it didn't matter whether they were winning or losing. Exactly. It was just, hmm. You know, and when I spoke to her about it, she says, look, you know, you've got to show that you're in total control. Well, if you know me on the sideline... I am involved. I'm in control, but I'm involved, you know. And I tried, I did try to go a little bit more Jill McIntosh way. And the players looked at me going, what are you doing? You know, and so now I do say to people, you know, be yourself, but be your best self. You have to, you can't be anyone else. But Norma, I mean, she was a little fart. She was up, you know, up off a seat, down on a seat. And I'm going, oh, compare me with Norma, please. You know, it would be so cool. But she... Her and I did a speaking engagement here in New Zealand. And this was after the time, and I'm going to bring it up because you brought up the 99 yeah, yeah. World Champs. I'll have her now. Okay. And she called the Silver Fern Scrubbers. You remember the time when she oh, called Oh, I remember. Scrubbers? Yes. Yeah. Well, lo and behold, and honestly, for a period of time, Norma was far more well-known in New Zealand than in Australia. And she's generally really liked in New Zealand. So no problems there. We did the speaking engagement and she brings it up. I didn't because, you know, Norma's a friend. Wouldn't do that. You know? And she brought up the fact that, yeah, yeah, I understand. I know that you're probably a little bit upset that I called the Silver Fern Scrubbers. And I'm going, mate, what are you doing? You know, how am I going to get you out of this one? And then she says, yeah, yeah, but in the Australian dictionary, I'm going, you've got a dictionary? You've got your own dictionary? She says, well, what I really mean is that the Australians, when they call someone scrubbers, they don't mean what you thought it was. And, and then she went on to say something else. I didn't even hear what she had to say because I was looking at the crowd going, I don't know whether you've just done yourself in here or what. Oh, you know? no. and, and there was dead silence. And then we just got on with it. Eh? I'm going, oh, and to this day, I don't know whether those people bought into her concept <laughs> Or what the hell? Eh? I'm going. Why don't you just leave it? You know, it wasn't yeah. well. Initially, it was a major. It made headlines. Mm. You know, but on the whole scheme of things, it really wasn't a major. You know, no, and I know no. she didn't mean anything by it. Oh, of so, course, of course, uh, no. let of course. go. And I know, yeah, she but I did. I, I enjoy it, and I like like she'll bring up an attacking play. I'll do a defensive play, and I think we're both a situation. Um, we're not trying to outdo each other. Although we're competitive as, absolutely yeah. we are, you know. So, but uh, yeah, that's just nice to have, you know, lots of different coaches. And there are lots of coaches that I know, even from Australia. Mark Corbett was mentioned the other day. Yep. Now, her and I, her and I go way, way back when she was New South Wales coach and I was Auckland coach. And we used to, you know, have lots of games against one another, whether they were training games or full-fledged games. And it was just wonderful. And same with Marg Angover and lots of other ones. And I'm going, wow, I know all these people. Yeah. And I think that's what netball's about, isn't it? I agree. You know? I agree. Absolutely. And, yeah, and, and it's we've been, coached together and just yeah. love it. Yeah, mm. it's been great uh Having a mix of coaches and players just, you know, for me to... I mean, I, this is a blessing for me. I, the, the fact that other people are actually watching this and enjoying it wasn't... <laughs> <laughs> it 
was just to keep my little head ticking along during isolation. Now, listen, I can't let you go without. Oh, no, no, I'm, we're stalling here. See how we're just. No, we're not just stalling. Carry on. We're, we're going straight to the heart of karaoke. I'm dying oh, to hear no. what you're going to crack out. Are you? Have you? No. Ever, have you sung before? I don't like your tone. <laughs> People ask me because <laughs> I I am a lousy singer, but I've got a loud voice. And it's really funny. <laughs> the first time I heard Shani Layton, I, you know, and she's screaming out on court, and I didn't know it was her, and I'm going, who the hell is that calling out? You know how she calls out to her yeah, shooters, yeah, you know? Yeah. And it's lovely, it's lovely. But initially I'm going, what the hell? I'm going, finally someone that has got a deeper voice than I've got, you know? <laughs> Great stuff, you know? But no, 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 no. I am not a singer. Oh. And, and some of the others were indicated as well. I had a sleepless night last night. Going, what the hell? You're ruining my reputation, may I just say, okay? Will I do it? Well, I don't really have a choice, but you're going to right. make Minsky out of me if I don't. Correct. Okay? Correct. So, so what then do you I looked at okay, and I said, okay, a meaningful song, because some of these came out with, you are the greatest, you know, yes. we are the champions and stuff. Well, we had a song that I used when I was Fuji Force coach, and uh, it was a song that was played for all our home games prior to, and I kid you not, it brought tears to my eyes, and, I, and it was deep and meaningful, and I'm right into that, I'm right into quotes, still am, even though players may not be, I am. And the song was, It's Got To Be Perfect. Remember the song, It's Got To Be Perfect? Yep. yep. Okay, well, last night I'm going, this is it, this is the one, okay? So I'm sitting in my room, and I went, came out, bursting out in song. <laughs> Both my dogs shot out of the room at 100 miles per hour. And even I didn't like what I was hearing. So I, I am not going to, to sing it, okay? So, I'm <laughs> see, I'm getting ready now. Yeah, I can okay. tell. I'm excited. I'm getting ready. So this song, okay, hang on, just let me, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Right. This is a very deep and meaningful song, okay? And you probably need a, a hanky beside because it's yeah. going to bring tears to your eyes, okay? Yep. So, <clears throat> are you ready? Yep. Hang on. <laughs> mm, I'm ready. <clears throat> Don't! Go, <laughs> right, go. Eva okay. Miller, right. karaoke time. Thank you very much. Ik ben een PAD, VIND, ik ben een Nederlandse patvinder. U ziet me hier, u ziet me daar, ik sta voor iedereen steeds klaar. Van s morgens vroeg tot s avonds laat ben ik verraad. Ik ben een PAD, VIND, ik ben een Nederlandse patvinder. <laughs> Take that! <laughs> Didn't understand. It was terrific. <laughs> Thank you. And I know no one else is going to copy that one. Okay. You've remained you. unique from the start to the end of Gordy's Gas Bags, which is exactly what I expected. <laughs> now you can find out what that song is all about because it does have meaning. Oh. I will give you a hint. Here's the hint. Yeah, got it. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> I'm with you. Hey, Yvonne, thank you so much for uh, spending, you know, that when you looked at your diary and saw how busy it was that you could spend some time. I know. Having a chat. I've slotted you in. I have slotted <laughs> you in. <laughs> hey, um, I've been throwing out the challenge to uh, for Kiwi Week. I hadn't lined anything up. So if I said to you, who would you like me to chat with tomorrow night? What do you reckon? Oh, a person I've had a lot of time with. Oh, an interesting player that um, tremendous amount of natural ability. And if you said to her, okay, wing attack, centre, if you go to the right, then someone else will go to the left. And, she'll, and then she'll turn around and go to the left. And I'm going, why'd you do that? And the reason was, well, I just felt it was the right thing to do. Quite simple. <laughs> what I admire about this person the most, and it'll all come back to you in a minute, is that she was ordered off the court. As a silver firm, she had to leave the court and two minutes, and when she came back on, it was a critical time of the game. And she instantly got an intercept. And afterwards, I said to her, mate, normally if you come back on, you'd be a little bit more reserved than what you're doing. She says, no, no, 
I owed my team. And I'm going, you sure that was it? She says, well, in part, but also I just wanted to get out there and play again. Yeah. You know? <laughs> So, Timmy Parra Bailey. Oh, Talk Bobby. Timmy Parra Bailey. Bobby. I will, <laughs> I'll apologise for anything she says right now as well. <laughs> Unreal. So, Timmy Parra Bailey, I'm coming your way. Hopefully, she'll have a chat with me. We'll, we'll make that happen. But for the moment, thank you, Yvonne. Glad to see that you're as funny as I remember you to be and that you're healthy and well. Hang tight through COVID, champ. Yeah. Thanks for ruining my reputation. Pleasure. Enjoyed it. People. Great way to spend some time. Thanks. Good on you, mate. Take care. This has been Gordy's Gas Bag. See you later.